notebooklm.google.com, Google have now made this a formal part of Workspace. And we get the plus version, which gives us a few more features. I don't know exactly what that is when you're on Workspace as opposed to a uh, personal you know, consumer Gmail account. Uh, but you go in here, you open up and you create a new notebook. And effectively, you're going to drop sources into this notebook. Now, this was originally designed for people like studying for tests, where you can have a whole bunch of research information that you put in there. And it will only generate chat responses based on what information that you apply. It's not going to take information from the general internet. It's only going to take information from your sources. And you'll see the referencing of those sources is, uh, is really great. Now, I'll use the example of our SOP library for our business because I think that's a really great example. What we started doing is for a long time, we had all of our SOPs sitting in Google Sites and they're kind of quite static there. And that was where all our how-tos sat. And about a year ago, Scott, who's our CEO, said, hey, you know what? Like, why don't we put all of these into, uh, at the time, a chat GPT, uh, whatever their little bots are called, what are their, whatever their gems are called. Let's draw from all of our sources on internal documentation on how to do things. And let's just have a bot that new team members, if you're a newbie starting with our company, you've got somewhere where you can query internal business processes. And Notebook LM basically does that in an interface, whereas a year ago we had, a, we had one of our engineers build it. You can upload and drop PDFs, uh, any kind of documents straight into here, text files and, and all that kind of thing if you want. So if you've got like a 100-page document uh, or 1,000-page documents and you want to be able to distill information from a bunch of different sources, that's what this is really brilliant at. Uh, but of course, you can, you can uh, do your Google Docs as well. So I'm going to go and search for our SOP masters. What we've now been doing as opposed to putting things in Google Sites. Can I select multiple? Yes, excellent. Okay, great. So we've been putting all of our SOPs into an SOP master, and there's one SOP master per area of the business. So let me go insert. So that's gonna bring all of these in as sources. Now, if I open up one of these to give you guys an idea what it actually looks like, can I open the document with one click. Oh yeah, here we go. Cool. All right. So here's what the actual document looks like to give you an idea of the format that we're going with. Not all these are complete because the team is still like cutting and pasting these from the, the old intranet, which was based on Google Sites. But you can see we've got different document tabs that you can create now, which is a bit like the tabs at the bottom of a Google Sheet. Google have recently put this into documents. So within one document, it's like you can have multiple documents, which is really cool because otherwise you'd have to have a million documents for this. But each different section, obviously it automatically creates your, your sections based on your titles, but you can have whole documents using the document tabs feature. Okay, so each process we put in a document tab. Well, that's the idea here as the team are building this out. And then in our notebook, we have all of these different sources now and still importing some of them what i can also do is i can pull in youtube videos as sources which is really useful because it's going to take the transcription from a video you can link to public websites i guess maybe i could link to the google site i don't know if that's going to work or not but let's have a crack at that let me see if i can find the genius net and see if a google site works here we go okay cool we've got it here all right let me drop in the url to our Google site. Don't know if that one's gonna work. I guess it's a Google document. So technically, oh no, Google Drive sign in. All right, let's try a Google doc. Uh, it's not gonna bring in a site, I don't think. Let's see what happens if I do that. No, it's only looking for presentations and documents. Okay, cool. Anyway, but you get the idea there. So you can pull in videos. You can also, if you want, just paste text. So if you've got just raw text from somewhere, you can just dump it in. Maybe it's a transcription from a meeting. Maybe it's a set of notes from a meeting. Maybe it's, I don't know, an output from GPT. You took a photo of a notebook and you said, hey, transcribe my handwriting, cut, paste, drop it in. All right, cool. So you get all your sources and they end up here. There's now a discover button, which is pretty interesting because it can help you find sources. I don't know if it's going to find any internal sources here, but maybe let's ask it find me sources from my Google Drive around SOPs that my team have written. Let's see what that, I've got a feeling these are gonna be public sources only. 
yeah, these are all public sources. But if you happen to need public sources, that, that'll work. Okay, so it ingests everything and it thinks about it. Now, I think it's still kind of like processing everything, but effectively this gives us like a little private GPT based on all of these sources that I've created. Now, there's some automatic buttons that you can click, which will automatically generate summaries of all of these sources. So remember, this was originally designed for like students who are doing research and needing to summarize stuff. So you've got a study guide button, <laughs> which will generate a study guide, might be useful for a new starter who's on probation, who you want to you know, really understand all of your SOPs. Uh, briefing doc, probably more useful. So I can just click that button and it's got its own prompt that's gonna generate the briefing doc. While it does that, because it will take 30 seconds or so to do that, you've got FAQs there as well. Timeline might be useful if it's documents and resources around an event of some sort. I don't know where that would be useful in business, but I don't know, maybe if you had a legal issue and you pulled in a bunch of emails, documents, resources relating to that, maybe that would be useful. Let's open the briefing document, here we go. So IT Genius Standard Operating Procedures, and it's given a brief of all the different areas of the business, I guess, in its different points there, which is pretty cool. Now, importantly, as you go through this, oh, it's not going to, all right, so that's just a summary. As we query it, I might say something like, tell me what are the top three finance processes that a new starter should learn? I'm just gonna prompt the sources here with whatever I want. I'm unable to answer. I've got a feeling it's still digesting everything, so it doesn't like that. I'll give it another minute to finish that and then uh, and then maybe it'll be a bit more useful. Now, there's one wild thing that Notebook LM does, absolutely wild. You can have it generate a 20-minute virtual podcast from your sources to help you digest the information in the most succinct way possible. And particularly for those who are learners through audio, this is an absolute game changer. That's not me, but there are a few staff on our team who will take meeting notes, summaries, project plans, strategy documents. Scott generates these like 30 page strategy documents and they'll pump it into notebook and they'll listen to a podcast of two virtual hosts talking about the concepts. And it is so freaking good. You would not tell that it's not human. And it's literally synthesizing all of that data and putting in a format that makes it digestible and easy for you to understand, listen to. I think you might be able to give it even custom prompts now to customize this, but it's just insane, just completely out of this world. I'll see if I can find one I prepared earlier because that one's still thinking about it. I made a complete mess of this one because I added way too many sources. So this one turned into a bit of a hodgepodge, but do we have an audio? I don't know if we've got an audio yet. All right, let me find one that's got an audio. So we're doing things like when we do like leadership training, we're doing something with the CEO Institute, we're adding recordings, PDF, workbooks, information that we've received as resources, all into one leadership training notebook that we then share with our team. I'm gonna try and find one that's got audio, see if I can demo it for you guys. No, we don't have one generated and it takes a few minutes to generate, but you get the idea, you click the button, you will be amazed by that. Let me show you one thing. So when you're, when you're prompting it, when you're prompting it, let's go to CEO Institute resource. Okay, cool. Give me a summary of all the documents that I've uploaded here. All right, let me put that in. Oh, it's even given me prompt questions. So it's given me prompt questions that it think would be good questions based on the data, which is very smart. But when it gives me the summary of the information, it will reference where it got the knowledge from and it will tell me the exact spot in those documents. So I know it's not bullshitting, it's actually using the data that I fed it for this information. And in the case of SOPs, someone asks a question, it says, here's how to do that process. Okay, let me just click the button and check. All right, here's step one, step two, step three, step four, with a link there. It's so idiot proof and so powerful. I think that's exactly what you want. If you liked this video, we've got plenty more on the channel covering this topic and much, much more.